I'm making a world for my D&D game, and this is one of the ways I'm going to be keeping track of it. Main goal of the world is to feel lived in, familiar, and distinct. Alright, where the hell do I start? Oh yeah, uh, subscribe. The world is born from direct interaction with the gods. Before the deities left the world, we'll get to that. The divine inhabited the world same as you or I alongside people. They walked around moving mountains, feeding people, and overall being real great dudes. I mean, there was war and strife in those days. The world wasn't perfect, of course, but it was much better than it is now. Then, the divine just left one day, sending the world into chaos and disarray with magical nodes called Eldraean nodes popping up in places of extreme magic. Meanwhile, the people of the world all just fell into so many issues without the divine. The biggest issue being, you know, war, that good old reoccurring issue. People started uniting under banners and fighting over land and the thoughts that, oh, well, that group of people are the reason my divine left, and if we get rid of them, then my good old buddy God will come back. This did not work, obviously and just left a whole bunch of people dead. Meanwhile, amongst all this, there's one neat nation to the south called Luminaris that didn't fall into any wars, and instead just decided, hey, let's all, like, uh, help each other? This worked out real well for them till the leaders realized, hey, what if we got real rich off these people? And that's kind of where their story is now. To the north, like, way north, no, not, not that far north, a little bit south of that, there are the dwarves of Citadel Iron Peak, who upon the divine leaving, went and retreated into their mountain and locked the door for a few hundred years. Up to the north, the clans of Northholm, original name, I know, they decided after fighting each other for a while that maybe we're an equal match for each other. What if we united under three clan leaders instead who decided who else in the world we go stab? To their south, there is Coralia, who all fought each other for a while and then united under the richest among them, who they called King, and woe be upon ye, a monarchy is born. Jumping east, we have the nation of Veridana, who did basically the exact same thing as Coralia, but then decided their king was weak and now they have a co-ruler situation with one warlord, one trade lord. Their southern neighbors over there are goblins, who decided raiding was dangerous, and maybe if we just trade with them, they'll be like, yeah. And finally, the good old majocracy, the kingdom, wait, I didn't think this name through, of Athralis! They have a whole bunch of Eldraean nodes, specifically the uh, one in their capital is built on and makes use of, the Silver River, and that's all the nations, I think, because we obviously don't care about other continents. But Bringing it back to current times, the world is basically just, what if we all stabbed each other? I think that would be cool. But like, you know, they're all too scared to go to war, so they all stab each other real light, but the Kingdom of Thralis, as of Session 1, decided, hey, what if we go stab Luminaris real hard? Their military must be weak because of the, all that lack of fighting, but uh, corruption and military might tend to go hand in hand, so uh, that's gonna resolve soon. Oh, uh, the players, yeah, them. Uh, we have Sad, Old, Smart, Angry, and, uh, Twink. You can follow their story on the World Anvil I'm keeping track of all of this on. Uh, hashtag nonspawn. Link in description. Sad earned their moniker due to their tragic backstory. They have, uh, mommy issues and take it out on their D&D &D characters. Their mother has disfigured them and banished them from the family. Same thing in game two, obviously. Old has earned that name because they're on an age-old quest to solve dying. Many people don't know this, but turtles die after they have kids, like, real soon after, like, year after, and never get to see them grow up, and he wants to change that. Smart as an elf, her whole thing is, hey, I'm the only one here without a tragic backstory. Their mom died, but, like, it's not sad. Their dad still just, like, bakes cookies for them. They lost their old adventure group, but it's not that sad, because they're elf and death is really whatever. Angry is a tiefling barbarian who used to be in a gang. They wanted to revolt and get a better leadership system, but uh, that didn't go real well for them. And uh, Twink is purely named that due to the player always playing Twinks, and this time no different. They're playing a fairy who unironically has the least tragic backstory, but... Uh, session 1 changed that because uh, the player's village got burned, so uh, yikes, rip mom and dad. The players are much more interesting than this, of course, but 
I like breaking down their characters to be simple for my monkey brain. Anyways, uh, thanks for getting this far. I'll probably make an another one of these each month, covering all the things I add and adjust to the world. Maybe go over the D&D sessions a bit. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll respond whenever I remember. And uh, finally, if you want these videos to have more effort or higher quality, consider giving me your hard-earned money on Patreon. I really don't deserve it. Bye, have a good one.